Hi guys, it's Allie with Chaos Monkey, and I just kind of wanted to do a current project video, chat video. Um, I've been sick for a while, and um, it's just frustrating, so I couldn't really get anything done. So now that I'm feeling better, I kind of want to do all the things. So um, I don't know how much I have to show. I have a lot of future projects to show. So in the meantime, I was just going to knit on some socks and just do like a quick chat and then show you my projects. So I am working on these socks for me. I haven't done much on them. And it is uh, Patton's Croy in Blue Raspberry. I always forget that name. And this bag is, um, who is this from? Silver Shed USA on Etsy. And I can't remember what this is called. I think this, she does different types of bags. And I think this one was like something to do with walking. Like walking around bag um, in the small. Because it, it fits two balls. I don't know, it's too dark in there. You guys can't see. But it fits two balls of yarn and my socks pretty good for these. Like a walkabout or something she calls these. Um, maybe if I remember I'll link it down below. So you, if you guys don't know, when you look down in the description bar, if it says more... Click on that and you'll see everything that we put in there for you guys. All the links and all the extra information. So if remember, I will link her shop. Ooh, that's not good. Needle went right through the sock. Okay. So, um, I just want to say hi and thank you to all my returning subscribers and all my new subscribers. And, um... I have been kind of out of commission for a while. I try to do a video every week or every couple of weeks at the most. And uh, For those of you that don't know, I have a chronic health condition. I have fibromyalgia and a lot of other things. Um, and everything that goes with the fibro. So I was having a lot of IBS issues, which is irritable bowel. And then I got an infection and I had to go on antibiotics. And the antibiotics didn't work. And then I had to go on some second antibiotics. And I don't like taking antibiotics anyway. They don't make me feel good. And I just felt blah. So I didn't do anything for like over a week. I just kind of barely got much done. And then did, didn't pick up the needles or the crochet hook pretty much at all for me. So I really don't feel like I got much done. I think I got like one thing done. And then... When I started to feel better, I put a whole bunch of projects, got got a whole bunch of product, projects bleh, ready to go. So you're probably just going to see me, like one finish and then like ten projects I'm going to start or just started. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it in fibro sex. For all my fibro sisters and brothers out there, I totally commiserate with you. Um, I had to quit working in 2015 because of it, and I'm really trying to get myself back into being able to work, but to be honest, I think I'm finally coming to terms with the fact that I'm probably not going to be able to for quite a while. And it's just frustrating. It causes anxiety, depression, and all those nasty things that a lot of us deal with, you know. I know a lot of us have different health conditions, chronic health conditions, genetic health conditions, um, anxiety, depression, all of that stuff, so. I just, you know, just had to get over all that and start to feel better before I did any filming, of course. Because this is our happy place. So that's pretty much all that's been going on with me. I'm just working on these socks two at a time. Um, these needles are size zero, I think they're turbos, Addy turbos, and, um, I just, I'm almost to the heel, I think I've got like maybe an inch to the heel, and these socks are for me, I actually did the same thing on the back that I do for my, I hope I didn't just knit through that, no, I'm pretty sure I didn't, um, me and my boyfriend makes me put the ribbing on the bottom because he likes the extra cushion, and, um, I'm doing that actually for myself on the bottom on this pair to see if I like it or not. And hopefully I do because, again, these socks are for me. And if I try to give these to my boyfriend, his feet are bigger and he they'll, they won't fit his heel right um, lengthwise and they will 
fall off and stuff, so it's not like I can go, hey, I don't like them, here you go. So let's hope, hope I like them. But I figured I'd better give it a try. It'd be nice to have a little more cushion on the bottom, but here's the ribbing I'm doing on the bottom like I do for him. Oh, and I got my nails done. I put it on Instagram, but I got my nails redone. And uh, this is the, what do they call it, tiger's eye? And I have beat my nails up so badly. And I realized how fast my nails grow. You can already, I just had a fill and already I need another fill. Which of course I'll wait. But <clears throat> this is probably the last time you're going to see me with nice acrylic nails. Because uh, I can't afford to keep doing them as often as I need to do them. And I would probably like to spend the money on yarn. <laughs> Other than my nails, even though I really, really like doing my nails a lot. <clears throat> I think I'd rather spend the money on some yarn for some st from future projects and stuff. So, we'll see. We'll see what I decide to do. Um, but on the bottom, it's just pretty much... Um, I know my lighting is really bad. I have daylight, but it's kind of this weird indirect daylight right now. Let me see if I can do my overhead light here. I don't know if that's going to help at all. It barely does. So I can probably move down a little bit too. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just being sick, getting over being sick. Try not to be depressed about being sick. And then feeling better and back to the projects. So... There you go. Oh, I did do a long video. I'm going to try to keep this one down fairly short. So I'm only planning on like talking for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll bring out my projects. And um, hopefully this video won't be very long. Because my other video was like an hour. And it took me three days to upload. <laughs> Not fast <laughs> on my internet speed. So... Yeah, and then sometimes I've done that where I've done the longer videos and it took three days to upload and then it'll throw it out like the last ten minutes. Something will happen and the entire thing will be gone. And that is painful when you have to re-upload for another three days to to get a bigger video out. So I do prefer doing the shorter videos and getting kind of getting to the point uh, and then moving on. So, But I did do a long video for my stash and... Uh, hopefully that's already up by the time this video goes out. And then this video will probably be a couple days after the stash video, depending on how fast the upload is. But yeah, I was really amazed at... I, you know, I cleaned up my stash not too long ago. And then when I kind of went through it, it's always like a surprise. And um, I don't have a really big stash. I would say I probably have, what, like a medium stash, you guys think? Um... It's not super big and it's not super small, so I think I'm kind of somewhere in the middle, like Goldilocks, right? Just right. But I would like a bigger stash, don't get me wrong, but that's pretty much where, you know, with my storage and everything, and I do have still have room. Um, I could still cram some of those together and still have like a whole other bin, so I have room, a little bit of room to grow, and but I'd have to reorganize some of the cubes. I, if I reorganized the cubes, I could probably get a whole free cube, if not two free cubes out of there. So it's not like packed to the gills in my yarn storage. But yeah, and then I have, you know, tools, but not like a crap ton of tools. I don't have like six billion sets of interchangeable needles or crochet hooks. I did realize I didn't show my crochet hooks in my video, but that's because they are in a cup next to my chair. Um, I have like a coffee cup that I have that I put all my crochet hooks in and some of my straight needles for knitting and um, like a pen and stuff like that, scissors. But my crochet hooks are not impressive, so I didn't even think about showing them. I just have standard crochet hooks. I have some with the female clay on them, but most of them are just regular old. Crochet hooks are just the rubber ones with the rubber handles. So, yes, I do have a lot of crochet hooks, but, you know, they're just shoved in a, can in a cup. So, 
but that was it. And then the scraps really surprised me. I didn't realize how many scraps I have. So I'm definitely going to sort through the scraps and divide them into uh, the scrap blankets they need to go into and organize all that so I can just grab a bag and just start doing my scrap blankets. So if you guys also want to see, like, I have a ton of sweaters, I have a ton of shawls, and I have some blankets in on the go. If you guys want to see all that, um, all my blankets, I think I have actually one blanket finished, three blankets uh, in progress that use different types of yarns, and um, a whole bin full of shawls and sweaters that are finished. If you kind of just want to see my sweater collection and my shawl collection, just let me know. And I can do a separate video on those. Everything's on my Ravelry. So um, if you look under Chaos Monkey on Ravelry, um, you'll see like everything, almost everything I've ever made. Almost everything is on there. Um, but if you want to see them in person too, just let me know. And then also I have Instagram under Chaos Monkey and an Etsy shop under Chaos Monkey. And that is about it. So I didn't, I don't know, I didn't really feel like knitting or crocheting. I have been working on a miniature, but that one kind of takes a lot of effort because you do have to pull out a lot more stuff to work on it and to put all that stuff away. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to work on the miniature some more. But I am filming that, um, putting together like a big long video to put out in the future when it's finished. So you guys can kind of see me work on it. It's probably going to be more in pictures because I really don't have the setup to do full filming plus fast forward and all the editing yet. But you'll at least be able to see kind of piece by piece how I put it together and then the finish. So I thought that would be fun to film. Since I'm working on it anyway, I'll film parts of it and then just take some pictures here and there. And, um, then you guys can kind of see from start to finish. So anyway, I have these socks are pretty much the only thing I was working on, and we've hit about 12 minutes of chat, but I did want to do some, um, some shout-outs <clears throat> for some podcasts I have been watching while I was sick and didn't do anything else, really. Um, I found a lot more of the newer podcasts that are the smaller ones that kind of pop up on your feed here and there, and then you're like, oh, oh hey, you're new, or somebody else shouted them out so you can find them. And who's I watching? I think I just wrote down everybody I was watching lately, uh, regardless of how big the channel is. But I was watching the Crafty Floridian. And, and I'm not going to link everybody down below. That's going to be crazy pants. But, you know, just kind of, if you just type the name in the search bar of the YouTubes, you can find them. So, Crafty Flor Floridian. Um, who else was I watching? I have a list over here. Oh, Burly Pearly Knits. Burly Pearly is like really fun to watch. He's Canadian. I think he's doing some tutorial videos. And he, I think he's um, a tour guide of some kind. I, I don't know if I'm using the right term for it. But he like takes groups of people up in the mountains and all over the place in the woods and stuff in the Canadian. Um, where is he? Crap, I forgot where he was in Canada. But anyway, he's really fun to watch because he'll show you all the um, some footage of where he's been and where he's like where all the beautiful beautiful scenery on his tour groups and he does some great knitting so and he's fun to watch so um, burly pearly um, happy to hook I watch happy to hook regularly and she was doing a um, classic movies thing that I found really really fascinating and some giveaways, and who else? Oh, Nana Stitching Lounge. Um, I've been watching her. She's a newer channel, and she's she knows what she's doing. She does a lot of a lot of good work, and um, I think the last one was like a haul video. I think I watched. Um, but anyway, watch her. And Fiber Hustle. Those guys are super funny, and. They're kind of on the long side too, and there's a lot of chatting, so if you just want to sit and hang out with somebody while they're talking about everything and then their, um, their knits and everything, they're fun to watch. Um, 
who else was I watching? Let's see. Angela's Crochet Art. Um, Treehouse Knits. Uh, Llama Mama Kayla. I started watching her because everybody was doing her bingo. And I am going to start doing the March bingo. So the March bingo card just came out. So if you don't know about um, uh, Llama Mama Kayla, go um, look her up and uh, watch her video for the March bingo. And she'll explain all the rules and everything and tell you how to get the card. So I'm going to try to do the bingo card this month. I thought that would be fun. I'm really bad at cowls and things. Every time I think I'm going to participate in a cowl and... Um, all of that, I end up getting sick or just kind of prioritizing differently and I don't want to start something new and I'm horrible at cows, which is knit alongs or crochet alongs or craft alongs. But um, I think I might be able to do the yarn bingo because it's kind of like do at your own pace type of thing, you know. So that might be fun. And who else? Um, did I say? Oh, Cla Claxton Tree Crochet. I was watching the 10 non-yarny things about me. I'd missed a lot of people. And I watched her and I subscribed because she was super awesome. So Claxton Tree. Uh, and then Jonah's Hands. I don't know if you guys saw Jonah, but he's a young guy. He's like 11. Is he about 11? He's a, an avid crocheter. I guess he's been crocheting since he was like 5. And I guess he got a lot of media attention lately. I guess a news channel did a story on Jonah. And then it just kind of exploded from there. But he's also got a YouTube channel now. And he does a lot of unboxings. He gets a lot of stuff sent to him that he unboxes. And um, so he's got a, a fairly big channel, actually. Um, and I guess he also got a book deal recently. So, But he's super fun to watch. He's adorable. So if you guys want to watch Jonah at Jonah's Hands... Um, it's pretty fascinating. He's a really good crocheter. Um, it's amazing what kids can pick up. I wish we had YouTube when I was a kid because I probably would have mastered like 16 different things by now. You know what I mean? Because it's like just so nice to have the information ready. You know, especially when your parents don't do it. If Back in the day, if your parents didn't do it or your grandparents didn't do it, you didn't get to learn it. You know, or your neighbor's mom or you had to know somebody in person to learn crochet and knitting and it's just so nice just to have videos now and you can learn from 15 different people and it's just, I love it. I love YouTubes. I love being able to learn new things. But just imagine being a kid growing up in that environment. The good part of media um, is that you can just pick up so many things and learn so many things that you're interested in. Become a master at a young age. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to finish this side of my sock, and then I'll pull out my um, finish. I think I have only have one finish, but I don't want to put these in my bag halfway through. This kind of pulls on the cords. So, But yeah, those are my shout-outs. Those are current channels I've been watching. And um, it doesn't mean I haven't watched more. That just means I just that's who I wrote down, I guess. <laughs> So if I left anybody out, <laughs> um, I'll try to catch you next time. I try to comment on almost all the videos I watch, but sometimes I'll watch them once and not comment and then watch it again and then comment because sometimes I won't watch the whole thing or if I have to keep jumping up and down, I'll miss half the video. So sometimes I've, I start a video and then I've got to watch it like two or three times before I comment or write down that I've watched it, you know what I mean? So. Or if it's a really long video, I have to watch it in pieces, which is another thing I love. So, you know, if there's a long video, you don't have to watch it all at once. You can always come back and finish it later. Or just fast forward to the part you want to see, you know. But anyway, I really like the striping in this. It's coming out really interesting. So now we're back in this speckle, but we started in the speckle. But then there was like this solid blue stripe, which was kind of surprising. And it's kind of doing like a solid in all of these. So I think it might repeat. So this might, this part might start off like this and just repeat up. But anyway, hopefully I'll get those finished um, 
this month, because my goal is to do 12 socks a year, and this is actually my February socks, so I'm a little behind. Um, but I'm trying not to do, you know, can't put too much pressure on yourself. All right, so, oh, I just wanted to show you the yarn bingo. Um, if you guys were curious, this is the bingo card. I had just printed it out for Llama Mama Kayla. So I think I can do a lot of these, so I'm kind of excited because it's not like you have a lot of pressure. It's just whatever you're already doing, you can just mark off or something you were going to do, and you're like, hey, yeah, I can do that now. So I, I think I've found a bingo already of just stuff I was going to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab my stuff. And I'm going to grab my finish, so give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Okay, guys, this is my Mystic Morning Wrap by um, Two of Wands, and it's a free pattern. You can find it on Ravelry. Um, if you link it on Ravelry, it'll take her to our website where she has the pattern for free, or you can pay for an um, ad-free um, file. Um, PDF for like a few bucks so but I just do it for free off the website because it's it's really an easy repeat so you don't really need the pattern um, once you start it you can just be on online and start it and then once you get the pattern down you can just you know just repeat the pattern so I made this out of um, Red Heart Soft and most of my yarn labels were missing so I can't really tell you the colors but this was just yarn I had in stash that I wanted to use up, and this, of course, is a silver. This is a teal. This is a purple plum, I think. Might have been the color. The blue was navy. And then back to the silver. I'm really sorry about my lighting, you guys. Um, it's some crappy weird lighting today the way it bounces off the snow, the daylight, and then my overhead, and then it just keeps doing weird things. And then it goes back to the teal at the bottom, and this one is really big. I made the I made another one out of this pattern, out of the red and black alpaca yarn that came out much smaller because it was a fingering. This is a worsted, and it came out big, and it's really nice and drapey. She does it on a really big hook size. I think I used a L? if I remember correctly, and it came out really drapey. Um, I ripped it out once because when I first started I used a smaller hook and it was just too solid for because it's a worsted, but once I went up you can see how how drapey that is. Really nice. So that's my only finish and I'll show it on my mannequin so you can see the full size because it's gargantuan. So my only thing is I have to weave in all my ends from the color changes and I'm wondering if I should do tassels because the pattern has tassels. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? It's just three tassels, one on each corner. And I have enough yarn to kind of put little tassels together. But it's already pretty big and drapey that, I don't know, I think the tassels would might be a little overkill on this one because it's so big. But, I don't know. It's super big, super squishy. It was a good use for the... Um, Red Heart Soft because I think I'd originally bought the soft for like um, Stuffies Amigurumis and it doesn't really work for that. It's too soft to, um, I have a feeling it would pill more in a stuffy. Um, I do use it for some blanket squares every once in a while but mostly not for stuffies so I had a lot of it in there so I'm really glad to use it up, get it out of there. And as you can see, it's huge. It just goes on for days. There's my other corner. So I'm really happy with it. I cranked this out probably, I would say, when I realized it wasn't, when I finally started to feel better and I wanted to work on something, I just wanted something easy. And so I pulled this out with the yarn and um, I started it in one evening and finished it the next day. So I don't know how many hours that was, but um, super fast. I love crochet because it's so fast. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to show future projects um, and stuff I've kind of gotten ready for future projects. Oh, this one's knitting. This one is. Let me show you the front here. Try not to give away the pattern. This is the Hitofude cardigan 
by Hiroko Fukatsu. <laughs> Fukatsu? <laughs> Fukatsu. And she, this was really popular probably, was it last year? The year before. I don't know. I get time all mixed up. But I made one back in the day when it was more popular. So I think I started it a couple years ago, finished it last year because I was on a finish all the things kick. But I made it out of a, a green. So it was a Knit Picks silk wool blend. Can't remember the name of the base in a really pretty, I want to say it's not a forest green, more like a moss green. It's on my Ravelry page if you want to see it. The lighting wasn't so good on the pictures, but I think one of the pictures showed the true green. Um, and it's super fun to put together. It's a really neat construction. You have to start with a provisional cast on, and then as you work through it, which I don't remember a lot of detail on, you end up kind of folding it into the actual cardigan and seaming it together. So I did get it started last night, and this time I'm going to do it in a purple, which I'm going to use um, Knit Picks Fingering, Stroll Fingering, and Duchess Heather. So I have just an, enough balls for this. So I think I originally bought it for this, to be honest, and um, this is just a needle keeper. You can find these on Amazon. Uh, but I just started it. So all the gray yarn is the provisional cast on. And for any, any of you that don't know, provisional cast on just means you make like a crochet chain and you knit into the crochet chain so that later on you can rip the crochet chain out and um, put the live stitches on the needles again, these live stitches on the other end, um, to continue to knit in the other direction or to seam it to another piece without the seam showing, more or less. And like I said, this one has two provisional cast-ons, so you, when you do the setup, you have to do one cast-on on a longer piece and then another cast-on on a shorter piece. And then when you go back to the second setup row, it's all in one piece, but you have two pieces you can rip out. Uh, one, I think, goes into the sleeve and one continues into the body, if I remember correctly, but don't don't quote me on that. So all I did was do the provisional cast-ons and the two setup rows, and I'm ready to go to start the lace chart, because as you can see, this whole thing is lace, but it's a pretty simple lace repeat. So once you get going, you can really catch any mistakes, and it actually is pretty fun once you're moving along, once you get some fabric. And it's not going to focus. So as you can see, and it's, um, she sizes it all the way up to XX large, but she is Japanese, so keep in mind that her XX large is probably not our XX large, because it looks like it's 50 and a half to 54 inches chest measure, bust measurement for her XX large. So if you do want to make this, um, if you're a knitter and you want to make this, you might have to do some adjustments to make it even bigger with your yardage and everything. Uh, I'm doing the medium because I did it last time and it fit pretty nicely. But also keep in mind the way this fits is it pulls up in the front. Here we go. I'm going to show you this picture. So do you see once it's actually constructed, the front pulls up higher than the back does. So if you are a bigger gal, you may not like this. It may not flatter you enough. You might have to make the... Um, this is the front portion longer when you make the whole piece longer. Um, just letting you know because I remember back in the day I watched a couple of podcasters uh, who were bigger gals who this kind of hit them right at the boop of uh, and they had to make a lot of mods to make it uh, fit correctly for them. So just a heads up. It's just one of those that it's longer in the back whoops, than in the front. And I don't even like cuts like that usually. Um, but I did like it in this on me, uh, in the medium, so that's why I'm going to make another one. I did like the way it looked. It was pretty nifty. And so, yeah, I'm going to get that yarn out of stash. I think looking at my stash, I was like, I picked this out for this and this out for this. I need to get these started. So that's what I'm doing. And I think I'm using, oh, and in case you're curious about the needles, these are actually square needles. And I don't know if you can see that. And these are from Collage. And they're supposed to be 
more ergonomic. Uh, you can't see that writing, can you? Anyway, these are size threes. Uh, cable is a 32 inch cable for this. Um, I have a whole bunch of collage needles that are thick circulars because I wanted to try them out. They had a, a soft cord that is really floppy and then this is a more firm cord which you can see is fairly firm but not really. Um, the needles are okay. I, I didn't really see that they helped me very much ergonomically but apparently they help a lot of people who have arthritis and stuff. And I think they have wood ones now too so if you wanted to try a different type of needle and I think it, they said it helps because it's more like a pencil hold because of the flat sides and somehow it helps with your hands, um, hand pain and stuff. But I'll also show you my little stitch markers. These are just some polymer clay. I honestly can't remember who I bought them from. It was so long ago. But these are just little polymer clay babies. And I also noticed going through my stash that I had a ton of polymer clay markers I never use. So I'm going to pull those out for the beginning and end. And then I will probably use just little metal rings for the repeats in the middle because otherwise they get in your way. But just at the beginning and the end, they're cute. I can use the bigger ones. So, so the Hito Fude is started. Um, it is lace, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get done because you kind of have to be in a lace mood because if you try to do lace when you're tired or not in the mood you tend to screw up lace so I don't know I'm not going to put a, a deadline on myself but I'll see how much I can get done but from what I remember the last time when you really get into it it gets faster the repeats get really fast so oh and the bag is also Silver Shed USA um, she has an Etsy shop she's got really good prices free shipping um, and, uh, what else do I want to say? This, I don't remember what this bag is. I think it's just a wedge. I think this is the medium wedge. She has large, small, medium wedges. She has all kinds, so. And I really like their quality. And here's the inside, if you want to see the inside. If I haven't shown this bag, I don't know. And then the rest is, like, future projects I haven't started, so. This is my watermelon bag. This was from... Let me think. Fat Girl Sewing on Etsy. Um, I love this bag. She does not have any more of these bags. You can see she used watermelon rind fabric, watermelon fabric, in the shape of a watermelon. This is like one of my most favorite bags in the whole universe. Um, and then when you open it, she actually put... Oh, hold on. Let me do this right-handed. She put gingham like a picnic. And there's an inside pocket as well. That's a lot of work. Um, I love this bag. It's one of my favorite bags. I will use this bag a lot. So if you want to see Fat Girl Sewing on Etsy, uh, I think she's really expanded her bag making. Um, she does a lot more bigger bags, uh, lets you pick out the fabric more. I think she, her shop really expanded since I bought this one. But I love this bag. So on this one, I was going to do some, uh, convertible mitts or fingerless gloves. This yarn was actually from Juliana's Fiber. I don't think Juliana dyes anymore. She was a Canadian dyer that I bought a lot of stuff from because uh, she was reasonably priced after shipping. And I didn't have a good use for this yarn because I didn't, I didn't like it in socks. I didn't like it in a shawl because the color changes are really short. Um, and I didn't like it for crochet. I didn't like it for knitting. So I kind of put it away because I knew eventually I'd find something to do with it. And so then I figured fingerless mitts like the long ones that go down to here and then up and then I'm going to do them convertible where you have the flap that goes over the top that you can put back here and snap and what's really funny is I was thinking about doing this and then Very Pink Knits came out with a pattern for it just like a day ago and I was like oh you know but I don't need the pattern because I've made those type of things in worsted weight so all I have to do is adopt it for fingering and this was just some of my hand dyed way back that I had scraps of so this one went really well with this one. So I'm going to use the gray for the cuff, the cuff on the bottom, cuff at the top, and then this for the whole fingerless mitt and the floppy, flippy part of the mitt. So I haven't started this yet, but I wanted to start this, and I was just in the mood. And my goal was to do 12 socks this year, 
and I'm already behind, but I'm going to count this as a pair of socks because I'm making it out of sock yarn and I'm basically making it the same longer than a sock if I go up to here, all the way up to here with the flippy part, I'm going to count that as one of my socks for the year. So that hasn't been started yet, but I got it all ready to go. Ooh, what's this one? This has hair on it. Hold on. Oh, hair, hair, hair. This is also a bag from Silver Shed USA. Ugh. This is um, also a wedge bag, but this is the small wedge. I have a lot of the small wedges because they're a really good size. And it has uh, the Avengers on it, like my other bag did. <laughs> did I show you? I have this one too. The large wedge. Did I even show you the side? There you go. Also the Avengers. Um, but this one is a one out of hibernation, and this one is also a knit. So I decided I'm going to get some stuff out of hibernation as well. And this is a Vinda. And this is what Avinda looks like. It's in lace weight. I don't like lace weight. So I started it and put it away. I bought it as a kit. And I think as I when I bought it, maybe I didn't think it was lace weight. Maybe I was thinking fingering. Who knows? I bought it years ago. And it's by Melanie Burke. But I really like the orange and the gray. So I bought the kit. And it is in... Well, first of all, I'll show you. This is just on some Haya Haya's my um, interchangeable Haya Haya set. What size are these? Threes? Might be threes. And as you can see it's pretty basic. It's just knit and then you put your different color stripes in and there's some short rows and I think it gets smaller as you make it. So if I actually start making some progress um, it'll get shorter and shorter and go faster and faster. But I need to work on it because this has been sitting in hibernation for probably a year. But I'll show you the yarn. I know most of us don't like the lace weight, but it is Madeline Tosh. So if you like the colors and you like Mad Tosh, then um, you can get these in different size yarns, not just the, the lace. You can get it in fingering. And so here's the gray. And this is actually in a uh, ball keeper. Um, I'll try to remember who makes these, who I bought these from. But this one is Narwhal's. I have four of them so far, and she has them pretty reasonably priced. And then this one's in uh, Deers. Basically, it's that a t-shirt material that is used to keep your cakes, when you work from the inside of your cakes, they will collapse and not. This stops that from happening because it keeps kind of an even tension as it shrinks as you shrink the ball, almost to the, when it's gone. Not quite that far, of course, but it really helps with the lace weight because this will tangle like there is no tomorrow. And the gray, it's in prairie. The base for it is prairie out of Madeline Tosh. And the gray is rainwater, but I lost the tag for the orange. So I can't tell you what that color is. But my whole goal is to finish, probably not by the end of March, but to at least work on this to get this finished um, in the next few months and off the needles and out of hibernation. Because I know I'll love it when it's finished. It's just working on it because of the lace weight. Um, that is a little... Bleh. But it will go faster. Like I said, it'll get shorter if I keep working on it. And then it'll feel like I'm flying on it if I actually pull it out once in a while. I might have to go to a bigger bag. We're kind of pushing. Once that shawl gets bigger, I might have to go bigger. And then... My last project um, that I got ready to go is the, oh, this bag is um, made in Nova Scotia by Art by Anna. I bought this forever ago. It's a nice, cute little sheep bag. And um, this is just scraps in green, which is probably not going to show because greens and blues like to be funky on the camera here. Now you can see green and blue and tan. These were leftovers from a shawl I did and I had 30 grams each left over and I kind of saved them and I didn't know what to do with them. This is in Cloudborn Fibers which is from Craftsy, sorry, Blueprint. Highland Superwash Sock Twist 
I guess the blue is an ocean. Um, I only have two tags here. And one of them is in stormy skies. So maybe the blue is stormy skies and the green is ocean and then the tan, I have no idea. But I'm actually going to make a 18 inch doll sweater out of these. Don't tangle. I had to re-cake them and I don't want to tangle them. Um, so that's kind of why this is all bagged up so that I remember. I'm going to do it out of my 18 inch doll book knitting um, for just like a simple sweater pattern just to use up that yarn. And that's it. I have pretty much one, two, three, four, one finish and like one thing on the needles technically and everything else is knit. So I think I'm probably going to start a, another crochet project. So I think I'm probably going to do a, um, a crocheted a stuffy as I wanted to do. I wanted to start a uh, amigurumi or stuffed animal. I have a couple of patterns um, that I do not have yarn for, but I have one pattern I think I can start with the yarn I have now. So I'll show you guys that when I get it started because I don't know for sure that's the one I'm going to do. So it'll be fingering or knitting in lace weight, knitting in fingering weight, um, crochet and worsted. Oh, and I also wanted to do another perfect gift poncho out of my last ball of scarfy, so that'll be another crochet project. So I'll have more crochet to show you guys um, next time, hopefully. But my finish was a crochet, um, and I would totally try that pattern if you guys haven't, because it's super easy and really repetitive, but it comes out so nice um, in the uh, Mystic Morning shawl. And I'll try to link as much as I can in the description box below. And I think that's it. I'm not going to talk you guys' ears off. Um, just kind of want to do a catch-up video and say I'm going to try for the bingo for March. And if you're not aware of it, head over to Llama Mama. And I know a lot of people were participating. And I definitely wanted to jump in for March. I don't know how well it will do, but it's, it's all fun. No pressure. Okay, you guys, I will talk to you later. Love you. Bye.